Hey everyone, it's Curly Head Med here, back with another video. In today's video, I will be sharing with you guys the image-based mnemonics that I came across while preparing for the USMLE Step 1 exam. I found these mnemonics really helpful when trying to memorize the details of the various lysosomal storage diseases. So if you are having difficulty memorizing those details, I recommend that you stay tuned. Um, side note, if you guys would like me to upload more videos on mnemonics I found helpful when preparing for the USMLE Step 1 and the USMLE Step 2 exams, comment down below and subscribe. Alright, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, we're going to start off with Gaucher's disease, the most common lysosomal storage disease. Today, we're going to be using Oscar the Grouch to help us remember the details of Gaucher's disease. And we're going to start off by noticing the green coloring of Oscar. This green coloring will help us remember the enlarged liver or hepatosplenomegaly seen in individuals with Gaucher's disease. Now, if you notice, there's a piece of wrapped candy on top of Oscar's head. This should help us remember the deficient enzymes seen in Gaucher's disease. Glucocerebrosidase is deficient. So gluco represents sugar or the candy and cerebro represents brain or head. So the candy or sugar on top of Oscar's head should help us remember glucocerebrosidase. Moving on. As far as I could remember, I've never seen Oscar outside of the trash can. He's always been in a trash can. So today we're gonna assume that Oscar has no use of his legs because he has avascular necrosis of the femur. Poor guy. Yeah, he has avascular necrosis of the femur, which is also common in individuals with Gaucher's disease. Next, we see the crumpled tissue paper surrounding the trash can. And this will help us remember the crumpled tissue paper lipid laden macrophages that are seen in individuals who have Gaucher's disease. So that's all. Those are the key points. Gaucher's disease, common findings are hepatosplenomegaly, osteoporosis, avascular necrosis of the femur, and Gaucher cells, also known as the lipid laden macrophages resembling crumpled tissue paper seen on histology. Next, we have crab disease. And today we're gonna have good old Mr. Krabs to help us remember crab disease. First off, let's look at the weird looking eyes that I have drawn in the pinpoint pupils that I created for Mr. Krab. That is gonna help us remember the optic atrophy that's seen in individuals with crab disease. Next, you can take a look and notice that the his eyes kind of look like boobs. So the boobs on top of his head should help us remember the deficient enzyme galactocerebrosidase. So just like with Gaucher's disease, we had the candy on top of Oscar's head, helping us remember glucocerebrosidase. For crab disease, we have the boobs on top of his head, helping us remember galactocerebrosidase. Galacto meaning milk. Milk comes from boobs. Boobs on top of his head, galactocerebrosidase. Next, the the shape of the eyes that i have drawn here should help us remember the glaboid cells that we see in crab disease moving on um mr crab's hands are obviously a bit deformed crabs kind of have deformed hands so the deformed hands should help us remember the peripheral neuropathy that we see in individuals who have crab disease Lastly, I'd like us to use the confused Mr. Krabs meme that be became so popular over the past few years to help us remember the developmental, developmental delay that's seen in individuals with crab disease. Confused Mr. Krab, developmental delay for Krabs disease. Next, we have Tay-Sachs disease. And today, to help us remember Tay-Sachs, we have this stick figure of a vampire whose name is Count Tay-Sachs. Because vampires suck blood, his name is Count Tay-Sachs. First, if you notice, this vampire has red eyes, and that'll help us remember the cherry red spot on the macula seen in individuals with Tay-Sachs. Next, we'll see that this vampire has a very tall stature with really gangly arms, and he's saying two. That'll help us remember GM2 ganglioside for the accumulated substrate that is common in individuals with Tay-Sachs. Next, we'll see that there's a kid standing next to the vampire 
who is attempting to cast a spell or hex. That'll help us remember the deficient enzyme in Tay-Sachs disease, hexosaminidase A. The kid is casting a hex for hexosaminidase A. Next, we'll see that the kid is incorrectly trying to scare away the vampire with an onion instead of garlic. That should key us to the fact that this kid has a little bit of developmental delay. Developmental delay is common in individuals with Tay-Sachs disease. Lastly, the kid holding the onion will help us remember the lysosomes with onion skin that's common in individuals with Tay-Sachs disease. That is all. So Tay-Sachs disease shows progressive neurodegeneration. You'll see developmental delay. You'll see a cherry red spot on the macula. You'll see lysosomes with onion skidding. And you'll see a deficient enzyme hexosaminidase A and accumulated substrate GM2 ganglioside. Next, we have metachromatic leukodystrophy. And to help us remember that today, we have a snowman. And if you guys notice, on top of the snowman's head is a rotten egg. And rotten eggs notoriously smell like sulfur. So today, to help us remember the accumulated substrate in metachromatic leukodystrophy, we're gonna think of the smelly egg on top of the snowman's head for cerebroside sulfate. We said before cerebro reminds us of a brain or the head and sulfate should help us remember the smelly egg. So smelly egg on top of his head for cerebroside sulfate. Next, the sulfate-like smell emitted into the air should help us remember the deficient enzyme aryl sulfatase A. Aryl for air, sulfate for sulfatase. So sulfate-like smell being emitted into the air for aryl sulfatase A, the deficient enzyme. Next, the snowman being white should help us remember that this is a leukodystrophy. Also, the snowman has no hands, he has no feet, he lacks a brain, so that should remind us that he can't feel, move, or create memories, and that'll help us remember the central and peripheral demyelination with ataxia and dementia that's seen in individuals with metachromatic leukodystrophy. Next up is Fabre disease. And to help us remember the details of this lysosomal storage disorder, we have an illustration of a ceramic mug with a galaxy design painted on it. And two phrases, my favorite activity is ceramics. We made a galaxy mug. Favorite should help us remember Fabre disease Ceramics should help us remember the accumulated substrate, ceramide trihexoside. Galaxy should help us remember two things, the deficient enzyme alpha-galactosidase A and that of the six sphingolipidoses listed on this page. Fabre disease is the only X-linked recessive one. Next, we have Neiman Pick. And to help us remember the details, we have the phrase, if you pick your nose with your finger, you have to wash your hand with foamy soap before you pick the juicy red cherries. Pick in the first part of the sentence will help us remember Neiman pick. The made up word sphinger will help us remember the deficient enzyme in Neiman pick disease, sphingomyelinase, but it should also help us remember the accumulated substrate in Neiman pick disease, sphingomyelin. Next, the word foamy should help us remember a common histological finding in individuals with Neiman pick disease, and that is foam cells, which are lipid laden macrophages. Lastly, red cherries should help us remember the cherry red spot on the macula seen in individuals with Neiman Pick disease. All right, the next two diseases we will review are in a separate category. The prior six were considered sphingolipidoses. The next two are considered mucopolysaccharidoses, and they are Hurler syndrome and Hunter syndrome. Now, to understand the details of Hurler syndrome, we're going to center the the following mnemonics around the word hurl. Hurl means to vomit. 
So the first finding in Hurler syndrome is gargoyleism, and that's where you have facial dysmorphia. To help us remember that, we have the following sentence. Oh my God, her face is so dysmorphic. I think I'm going to hurl. Next, we have airway obstruction, a second common finding in Hurler syndrome. And to help us remember that, we have the following sentence. <coughs> Something is stuck in my throat. I think I'm going to hurl. Next, we have corneal clouding. And to help us remember this finding, we have the following sentence. Oh my God, vomit got stuck in my eye. Next, we have hepatosplenomegaly, another finding in Hurler syndrome. And to help us remember that, we have the following sentence. Oh, my stomach is so big because I ate too much. I think I'm going to hurl. Lastly, to help us remember the deficient, deficient enzyme in Hurler syndrome, we have Hurler, which has the letter L highlighted, and we have the enzyme alpha l iduronidase alpha l iduronidase l in iduronidase and l in hurler this will this last mnemonic for the deficient enzyme will become a little bit more clearer when we review hunter syndrome which has a similar sounding deficient enzyme so for hunter syndrome one common finding is aggressive behavior and to help us remember that we'll we'll think of the word hunt again so aggressively hunting animals for aggressive behavior. Next, we have a lack of corneal clouding in Hunter syndrome versus Hurler syndrome where we did have corneal clouding. So Hunter syndrome, no corneal clouding because hunters can't afford to have clouded eyes. They need to have clear vision. Next, we have the deficient enzyme in Hunter syndrome, iduronidate sulfatase. And to help us remember that, we have the I do uronidate, urinate, urinate for hunters that urinate. I do uronidate, urinate, hunters urinate. I'd urinate. <laughs> I'd urinate, hunters urinate. And to help us remember that hunter syndrome is X linked to recessive, we have the phrase X marks the spot. Hunters aim for the X. All right, guys, that's a wrap. I really hope you found these mnemonics helpful because I know I sure did when I came across them a few years ago. I want to give a quick shout out to a small YouTuber named Matt Pulasco, whose original idea this was. I did make some additions and edits to it, so I hope you also find these helpful. And if you guys would like me to create more videos on mnemonics, subscribe and like this video. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye.